welcome back to my Final Fantasy 7 video walkthrough. Now, in the last episode, we polished off this one. Sephiroth polished off Aerith. And, yeah, we've got some stuff to crack on with. So, let's get straight into it. As soon as you've got control of the characters, after you've saved, you'll come back outside and Cloud will have a bit of a breakdown type vision of which way Sephiroth's going. So then you and the party are going to decide that you're going to follow him, obviously. But you've got a couple of other things that you need to do first. First things first, there's a couple of items that are going to become unavailable to you if you don't pick them up now. For example, go to the speed square, get 5,000 points and you'll get the umbrella. It's a bit useless now, but you know. Uh, also the Yoshiyuke, which is the sword for Cloud that you get by looking at the rocket with the old man. And you can buy a shotgun for Vincent, which is also a weapon that's going to disappear soon. So if you need any of them, pick them up. After that, come to Fort Condor, do the fight, but then once you've done the next fight and received three elixirs, what you want to do is you want to make sure that they've got at least 20,000 gil, I'd say. I personally leave them with 25 just because I've got a bit of money. If you're short, go over to um, the prison at the Gold Saucer and just run around in the desert for a bit and fight Cactuars. If you hit them with Matra Magic, you'll take them down in one hit. You'll have no problems and you get 10,000 gil per fight, so it's definitely worth doing. Now once you've done all of that, you're going to head back to the City of the Ancients and you're going to come out to the north of that screen that you were previously in. First things first, make sure you go around the outside of this kind of like stairway and make sure you pick up the item there. There's nothing else in this area, so once you've got that, you can just basically climb back up. Climb the steps all the way to the very top spiral around and then come outside and spiral back down and then across into this cave system here now i'll quickly show you how to get through these caves just because there's a few items that you can get you don't want to miss any of them some of them are quite useful this is not the way to go so i immediately got it wrong straight off the bat but i've sorted it now we're good so you're going to come all the way up here Doesn't matter which way you go, you'll still be able to go back up. There you go. And then we're going to grab the first chest, which is the bolt armlet. It's a decent piece of gear. Then come back down and go to the right. Run all the way along here and jump down. And if I remember right, this should be the Hypno Crown. Yeah, excellent, the Hypno Crown. Uh, what that does is it basically guarantees if a monster can be manipulated you've got a hundred percent success rate as long as you've got that item equipped so yeah pretty useful for when you're running around farming enemy skills later on in the game which we'll definitely be doing there's a few to pick up you know especially on that third enemy skill material since not got too many on there we're going to add a few shortly though we should be picking up bad breath and magic breath shortly uh, so that's going to bulk up that enemy skill now when you get to this ladder you're just going to come all the way down to the bottom and there's a materia down here, which is magic plus, I think. Yeah, magic plus materia. And then just climb all the way back up. And then go up. And then out to the next area. Grab the power source from the chest. And then when we exit here, we should be back on the world map. Yeah, so what you want to do is zoom back out and just follow this mountain in a clockwise direction. And if you do, you'll eventually come to Icicle Inn. Now, there's a few things that you can do at Icicle Inn. First things first, you've got the weapon shop here on the left hand side. Now, I would recommend picking up just two weapons from here. Um, one for Cloud, uh, the, or uh, the Enhanced, is it the Enhanced? Uh, the Organics sword, that's it. Uh, and then I've got Barrett in my party, so I'm going to go with the Micro Laser. Slightly later on, Tifa's going to be kind of forced into your party, uh, but literally seconds after she joins, you pick up a weapon for her, so it's not a problem. Now, if you head into this second building and just come over to this computer and use the action button, um, you'll be able to view some videos which are of Professor Gast and Ifalna, which is Aerith's parents. So there's some brilliant story content there. Now, after you've done that, try and exit to the north, uh, and you'll be stopped by this guy here, and eventually, some old faces will turn up.
So Alina's pretty angry. She's kind of blaming you for what happened to Seng at the Temple of the Ancients, but as you can see, she's easy to deal with as always. Now, once you've got rid of the Turks, head into this central area here, talk to this kid, and he's just basically going to give you a snowboard, which is definitely going to come in handy in a minute. And yeah, you cannot leave this area now. The Shimra guards are blocking the entrances. That's it. Anything that you wanted to get, you can no longer get. So that's why I kind of said just before, make sure that you get everything that you need from this one now. And come over into this house. Uh, you can chat to this guy outside. If you don't chat to him and you take the map first and then you go and chat to him, he gets a bit annoyed at you. But either way, grab the map off the wall and make sure you grab the vaccine and the hero drink from this back room. And then we're pretty much geared up. We've got everything that we need to press on to the northern crater. So you've got the snowboarding minigame now. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch how dreadful I am at it. Uh, use L1 and R1 when you turn in, because it'll help. Like, don't just try to use L1 and R1. You still need to turn using the D-pad. And I do recommend using the D-pad rather than the analog stick for this. It just feels a bit easier to control. But yeah, use L1 and R1 to turn. Now, once you get a bit later into this section, you're going to come to a couple of splits where you can either go left or right. So when you get to the very first of these splits, you want to go to the right. And when you get to the second one, you want to go to the left. And it will be exactly the same for you as it is for me. So I'll show you exactly how, you know, what areas you go through before you come to the split, just so that you can be a bit prepared for it. As you can see, I'm not very good at this. I'm all right at it. But yeah, you'll go over this stone bridge, and this is just before the first split. So go to the right at the stone bridge. And then the next one, you'll be going through like a valley with boulders, snow boulders rolling across, and then you'll come to like that brown ramp. When you see that brown ramp, get yourself lined up to go left. What you'll have done is by selecting both of those options, you'll have put yourself in a specific area in the next puzzle. And it should be right next to this tree. So if you aren't next to this tree, use the map that you've picked up and navigate yourself to that tree. But go to the right, Go through the two transitional areas, and then when you get to this next area, just come to the center and exit to the northwest, and that'll put you eventually in the hot springs. Come down here and touch the hot springs, and then you're going to exit to the north. And once you've gone through the transitional areas, you'll come to the snowy fields. Now there's two things that we need to do here. The first one is head to the centre, the very centre. So just what I tend to do is once one of the sticks reaches the edge of the screen, I'll press X again. Just so that I've got that marker for which way I was going. And just keep on going to the centre and eventually you'll see a stone formation, a cave. There we go. Head yourself inside there and just pick up the art material. And then once you're back outside... On the snowy fields, you're going to go to the right, you're going to go to the east. So using the same technique as earlier, once a stick reaches near the edge of the screen, drop the next stick. And just go all the way to the right and eventually you'll exit the snowy fields. It reminds me a lot of the desert in Breath of Fire, this. Now, eventually you'll come to this area here with a cave entrance. Head into the cave entrance. And what you're going to want to do is you want to go up to the person that you see inside the cave and just chat to them. They're not going to be happy with you because you've touched those hot springs. So you're going to end up in a fight. It's a really easy fight. I'm not going to bother breaking down any of the boss stats or anything like that. She's not got much health. Um, so yeah, just go through the fight nice and easy. Throw big guard up if you want to. Uh, and then after you finish the fight, what you're going to be left with is the Alexander Materia on the ground. So make sure that you pick that up. Then you're going to exit the cave, head to the south exit, and go into the next area through the two transition screens. And then as soon as you come out in the next area, go straight back the way you've just come. What that'll do is it'll put you into a different set of transitions. Uh, and in the second screen, uh, there's a Materia there that you're definitely going to want to pick up. So make sure that you grab that. Like I was saying, exit the cave with the Alexander Materia, head south. As soon as you get back into the first main area, 
go back to the way you came and it's in the transition screens. Once you've gone through that transition screen, you'll come back to the hot springs. So just head north again and you'll be back in the snowy fields. And then when you're in the snowy fields, head to the centre and just keep on going north. You're going north all the way straight across the snowy fields. You should, if you follow my guide, be able to get through it without passing out. Now, if you do pass out, you'll wake up here. You'll be found. Halls off will bring you back to his camp. You'll be completely fine anyway. So you don't need to be overly concerned as long as you get those items. Because if you don't get all of the items and you've got a trek back, that's when it becomes a bit of a pain. But as long as you've got all the items, you're good. Now, once you've finished all the conversation and dialogue with Holds Off where he tells you about what happened when he and his friend Yamsky climbed the mountain or tried to climb the mountain, he's going to give you some advice. Uh, and then once you're outside, Barrett's going to have a bit of a conflict within himself because he wouldn't live anywhere like this. He does appreciate Midgar for the fact that it's convenient, but at the same time, he hates Shimra. So he's a bit conflicted. After this, you'll exit to the north, and that's when the climb begins. So what you're going to want to do is, each one of these platforms that you get to, once you reach the platform, just stop for a second, mash the square button until your temperature gets back up to about 38 degrees. It doesn't go any higher than 38, or at least I've never been able to get it to 39. Also, I'd recommend if you've got the speed up on, turn it off because your temperature will just plummet if you don't do that. And eventually, you'll keep on climbing. The path's quite apparent. Just follow the red flags, and you'll reach this cave at the top here. Now, go through this little, um, little doorway here. Now, the route that we want to go is this way, but as you can see, it's blocked by those crystals. So go through the doorway that's just up the stairs, and come along this bridge, and just walk into the wall here, and you'll find a chest on the floor. This is actually a second ribbon, which, you know, you can pick ribbons up easy enough once you get a bit later in the game with Morph, but you only need to pick one more up now. Uh, another thing you want to do is make sure that you have got your encounters turned on in this area, just because there's an enemy skill that we can learn. So you'll fight this guy, which is Stilva, I believe, yeah, Stilva. Uh, manipulate him and he's not only got the trying enemy skill so he can put that on Sid's enemy skill material but he's got an attack called magic breath which is it's possibly one of the most powerful enemy skills as long as you're fighting an opponent that doesn't absorb an element if you're fighting an opponent that absorbs an element magic breath's not really the best option because it uses it's a mix of fire ice and lightning so chances are if they're absorbing an element they're absorbing one of them. And then, yeah, make sure that you protect yourself because magic breaths, it doesn't tickle. So, you know, it hits. So put big guard on yourself, put regen on yourself, make sure you're on full health when you use it. And then once you've got trying to magic breath locked down, you can finish silver off. Silver off. It's not a tough fight. Um, especially not with it being manipulated, it can't do anything. And as you can see, in the enemy skill materials, we're starting to stack up a decent amount. Make sure you grab the javelin from the chest there, it's a decent weapon for Sid. Uh, and then exit through this doorway here, and it'll put you just underneath that path we were on a minute ago. And if you follow it all the way around, you'll reach this boulder, and you can see what's going on here. You kick the boulder, and the crystals that were blocking our way are no longer blocking our way. All that's left to do now is to just go back the way that you came, work your way around, and then just, yeah, follow the path. It's pretty self-explanatory at this point. The only sneaky thing in this area is the ribbon. Make sure you don't miss that ribbon. And then we're back on the mountain face. Now, I like to go up at this point. Once you get to that, you, you'll see what I mean now. You're going to reach a little split that will say right or up. I always go up. I'm pretty sure both routes lead you to the same place anyway. Uh, one might just have a little bit more climbing in so you're a bit rougher on your temperatures but as long as you're getting yourself back up to 38 degrees on each platform you'll be fine
And then when you get to the top of the cliff face, you'll find yourself in another cave, so just jump inside. Run ahead and use the save point, obviously, and then grab the elixir from the chest. You're going to head out through this right door. Make sure you've got both of the ribbons equipped. Uh, and make sure that you've got your enemy skill materials equipped and you're looking to fight this guy here which is the Marlborough. Now I'm pretty sure if you've played a Final Fantasy before you know what we want, you know what we're here for. There it is, Bad Breath. So that's another enemy skill like in the bag. You can bring this guy down nice and easily. And then if you want to pop your no encounters back on you can do. Progress to this room here Make sure that you grab the fire armor, and then you're going to have four fights against these kind of like giant icicles. What you want to do, just straight off the bat, cast beta. No messing about. One shot, it will drop everything in the fight and you can move on to the next one. Now at the end of the fight, you're going to be given the option to jump down. Make sure you say no. And just repeat the process for every single one of those icicles and then once you've finished go to exit and it'll ask you if you want to jump down at this point this is where we want to jump down make sure you grab the speed source drop another save just because you know it's good to save uh, and then head through this middle cave here now you can grab the enhanced sword it's got a couple of extra slots for materia so you know if you really want to load cloud down with materia it might be a good option Now we've got the final one of these climbing sections here, so work your way up to the top. So once you get to the top of the cliff face, you're going to find yourself in this cave with a hot spring and a save crystal, so use both. And then once you've used both, you're going to stay in this area a little bit because there's a piece of gear that we need to pick up. A nice piece of armor. We've already got one piece of it, it's the dragon armlet. You want to run around until you encounter a blue dragon. Uh, he's not got anything to steal, as you can see there. He, he, he hits, so he's definitely going to want to put big guard on, but he'll drop pretty quickly as well. Uh, and then once you have dropped him and get to the end of the fight, you'll be able to pick up a dragon armlet. I recommend getting at least one for each of your party. Your active party, at least. Like You can get five or six if you want. It won't take you that long. You'll pick up a level, maybe, while you're doing it. So, you know, why not? Brilliant piece of gear. Anyway, once you've picked up enough, use the healing spring again and the save crystal. And then you're going to head down this corridor here and you're going to come to our next boss fight. You need to be able to steal, so make sure that you've got the steel material equipped. And to be fair, everything that we need for the fight beyond that is in the enemy skill materials that we've got. Equip your dragon armlets as well, obviously. Get yourself down this corridor and you'll jump straight into the fight with Skeezo. Now when you get into the fight, you'll see that you've got two targets to work on. First things first, throw big guard up. I definitely recommend keeping your HP nice and high as well for this one. I'd say keep it above, keep it above 1200 at least, I'd say, because each of the head uses a final attack when you kill it, and you're probably going to kill both heads in the same turn. If your big guards ran out, unfortunately, on that turn, you're going to look at probably taking about a thousand damage on each character. So I'd make sure that you've got that constantly up and keep your HP up there. Now, what you want to do is you want to be stealing from the right head of Shizo, Skizo, however we're pronouncing this. Um, he's got the Protect Ring, which puts you straight into combat with Wall active, basically. Which, you know, is not going to be constantly useful, but it is going to have the occasional moment where it comes in hander. All that you want to do, keep your HP up, keep on stealing with Cloud. Uh, when you reach the point where you want to start attacking, because you can start attacking, uh, use Aqualong because it'll hit both heads for a considerable amount of damage. Uh, neither of the heads will absorb it. They'll absorb beta, they'll absorb magic breath. Um, I'm pretty sure they'll absorb trine as well. But there you go, we've got the protect ring now. And once you reach that point, it is just go all out. Aqualung, Aqualung, Aqualung. Use White Wind, use Big Guard. I don't really know what else to say on, on, on this one. As long as you do that, you'll be fine. And if, you know, if your limit breaks pop, you'll probably drop in much earlier. There's a Meteor Rain, and that's going to be the end of the fight. So, as you can see, you will use this attack. He's only going to do about 300 damage to me, but that's A, because I've got Dragon Armlets on, and B, because I've got Wall up. Without Wall, you're probably looking at about 500 damage. 
each time, which is why I recommend keeping your HP above a thousand. You shouldn't have any difficulties whatsoever with this fight. Once you finish the fight, run back to the save point, use the hot springs to recover your HP and MP, drop a save and then come back through the corridor and you'll be back out on the cliff face for what is the final climbing section. There's no temperature gauge to worry about and you've made it. And that's going to be the end of this episode. In the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up with the North Crater and we're going to press on through the game. We're reaching, well, we're getting closer and closer to the point where we can start actually getting into all of the side quests like the Chocobo Racing, the Battle Arena, things like that. So yeah, I'm, I'm greatly looking forward to reaching that stage and breaking the game, basically. In the meantime, I hope that you've enjoyed the video. I hope that you're enjoying the series. If you've got any suggestions for things that we could do on the channel, hit me up in the comments, hit me up on Twitter. But other than that, Smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and have a great day.